Oh, whoops. I always do that. Someday I'll get this right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is the Afterglow Live Recap Podcast. My name is Sia. Aaron is on holiday for some odd reason. Do you like my decorations? They're beautiful. So we are totally stoked to welcome back Cynthia Beckham with Peer Cheer Covers. Why? Because she's my friend of 20 years and why not? So I'm in the mood of uh, feeling happy, uh, spending time with friends and family. And when you have a combination of both friend and family, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So um, we had a little bit of technical staff food, but our special guest will be joining us very shortly. And I'm super stoked. Uh, so until then, I guess we'll just have to make do with a little bit of our logos over the side of our faces. I think we're okay with that though, right, Cynthia? Oh, absolutely. Any, uh, any coverage we can get is great. See ya. <laughs> you know, after all, yesterday, Jeff said, uh, you know, branding is everything. So we might as well promote it. Right? That's what we I said. We really did. We don't have any logos on our uh, attire today, but we have them on the screen. So uh, can I tell you, I was actually, um, uh, I was actually looking for an innovation calling a uh, branded t-shirt. Uh, yeah. But apparently that would imply that Sia would have to do laundry. And apparently <laughs> that was not going to happen. So um, <laughs> what's that, what's that saying about uh, something about wishes and dreams and actually doing it or something to that effect? Well, boy, did I not get my lesson learned from uh, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> all right so real quick before we get started here so recap peer cheer covers talk to a sister what is peer cheer covers peer cheer covers are decorative home decor uh covers that slip over the back of your kitchen chairs your dining room chairs or your stools they are not only just for home decor but they're also for corporate use and can be customized and branded so they're actually the decor piece that has low effort high impact no nails no tape no paint easy to install and watch your space be transformed transformation isn't transformation that, is that not just the uh word of the year i guess for 2020 or just s show I, i'm trying to be positive here i think transformation people have sought out for years yeah you know not only themselves you know with new hairstyles clothing design but also your home i know that you know from 20 years in the event business we take an empty space and transform it into a party or a conference so it is a, a whole lot of fun to transform I love it. You know, and to me, transformation means that you're adaptable, flexible, you're willing to pivot. Yes. It's, it's all those elements that you need to be a successful professional and of course, business owner. Absolutely. Right? I think the, the word of 2020 is pivot, 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 and more pivot. We heard that yesterday with Jeff and actually so many of the glow uh, highlight speakers over the last few months is just about how companies during the pandemic simplified. They changed their concepts in order to not only survive, but to excel. And right. I think that that trend is going to continue into uh, 2021. So pivot away. Right? I mean, you know, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm so thrilled for this year to be over. Um, but I, I am so uh, hopeful. I am so excited for the opportunity to continue being different. Like, I feel like I had a lot of self introspection. Um, I had an opportunity to understand some things about myself that I liked and didn't like about myself. Um, and I think 2021 20, is about execution, right? Like, I think we had that opportunity to sit, sit in our jammies and, you know, heaven forbid, you know, may or may not have actually changed our outfits over time, but you know, <laughs> we, we came at something new. So on that note, Welcome. We have a super special guest, you guys. It's a, yes, it's, a, it's a holiday, holiday treat. Michelle Lemons Placente. She is the CEO and founder of Global Leaders Organization. I figured we would save the best two people in my life for last show of the year. Uh, thank you, Sia. What a pleasure to be here, guys. I've never yes. been on the Afterglow show, so thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. There's a reason for it because you're 
like you're like the um the uh champagne cork at the end of you know at the beginning of a celebration right <laughs> yes she is I she did an amazing it. job yesterday michelle you know as always with jeff so he, isn't he great he's just got so much energy too and and lots and lots of experience yes oh. he does yes he, he does he, you know what it, it, it everything if i could summarize for this year so we're talking about jeff sinelli the founder of which which sinelli concept uh, restaurant concepts um this man is again every single speaker that we've had on glow michelle great job on curating and obviously amazing network of friends that you have but everyone has authenticity yes. humility a can-do attitude and a willingness to help others yeah uh, and and those are just the top four that i just kind of noticed as a constant theme and i find myself thinking oh I, of course i have all four i mean look at me i'm the best right and if this year ever showed me anything is how much i was lacking in all four areas though i think from a cursory level i think to be a decent human you have it but to really wow. invest and really do each component and be thoughtful and intentional mm -hmm. that is what really struck me with all the speakers at glow this year mm -hmm. Um, Cynthia, you're new to the crew here. So the last month or so that you've been a member, what has your opinion, your thoughts, at least of what you've seen so far? Um, I completely agree with you, Sia, is that it's not just the inner desire to be an entrepreneur, but it's also to share with other entrepreneurs, I think is, is a huge aspect of being a part of GLOW and learning from some of the best in the industry, but also to take that to the next step of all contributions that we make as individuals, whether we're an entrepreneur or not, make an impact. And I think that if you keep that at the forefront of any business that you either start, run, or participate in, as long as you you know incorporate that, that is a, a key element in the mix. Yeah, and you know what I love most about what happened yesterday? Tell us. So what happened yesterday with Jeff in the VIP room was what happens, what we'd love to happen every day with, with within GLOW. But I heard Jeff go, hey, Sia, call me afterwards about your podcast because I want to talk about a business opportunity. And that's what's supposed to be happening as well with GLOW. So not only do you learn from all these people, but you're getting to interact with them as well with business opportunities, which, which that's what GLOW is about, right? Growing your business and you grow your business through these networks we're creating, right? These that's, new relationships. Don't jinx me, lady. So <laughs> what did you think about that, Sia? No, what did you no. think about when, when Jeff asked for your number in the, you know, uh, in, in the in private business room? Sense, business sense, in a business sense, in front of everybody. Uh, no, it was... <laughs> It was, it was not, it was completely unexpected first off, which was another thing. Like in 20 years of sales, I should not have been as taken aback as I was. I just wasn't prepared for that question. Uh, and it was just one of those things where I was like, uh, and I literally, Michelle probably laughing. Cause I literally, I think I, I was like frozen in this like deer in headlights face. I'm like, did he just ask me for like my number? Like what, what the F is going on here? Um, but, but that's, that's the thing was, I, I was so excited and I was like, oh my gosh, I only have like literally 30 seconds with this guy. Um, but it was just enough for him to be like, you know what? I don't have time to talk right now. Let's talk more. And you know, the fact he took my number, I mean, if he wasn't serious, I have his phone number now, so he's going to get serious. <laughs> <laughs> the, same thing, the same thing happened with Kevin Harrington. There was a connection made with Kevin and one of our members afterwards. Um, but that's what it's all about. It is about helping entrepreneurs, helping one another grow. And I love what you said, Sia, about the authenticity. So, you know, one of my prior businesses was a company where I managed and represented talent. And um, the thing that I always looked for was authenticity. That's what I always looked for. Uh, because there's a lot of charlatans out there in that in the world of speaking and um i love it when someone's actually been there and done it yes yeah you know you know there again is that been there and done it and it's not to say that every single time you've been there you've done it successfully right so, i mean jeff admitted like you know to me i loved the concept of genghis grill like i i loved it i was so thrilled i was excited 
And, you know, it was, he said he was in his 20s, I think, when he launched that one or right. had the idea and concept for, which I think is hilarious because it's like, I, I honestly thought it was an Asian person that started the business. So there you go on that. But, um, <laughs> you know, but, but he had a lot of hard lessons. I mean, that, that was a great mm -hmm. change for a while. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and now he's, you know, took, taken that, you know, the lessons he learned from it and he applied it. And he, when he applied to Witch Witch, I thought it was really interesting. So guys, he mentioned um, the concept of, actually, no, Michelle, you did cause marketing. Mm -hmm. And this is such a huge thing to me. So when you think of cause marketing, Cynthia, how do you think that relates to your business at Peer Cheer and at Tied Together Marketing for that matter? So I'll start with the Tied Together on the event side uh, of the house. So we actually participated um, in an incentive trip to build an orphanage in Marrakesh, in Morocco. And the concept came about uh, that we wanted to give back to the local community. And so even though the, the people that won this incentive trip, it gave them a sense of purpose. And interesting enough, we built a, uh, a facility for, for these orphans in Marrakesh. And from there, these relationships bloomed into, you know, how else can we help? So one little small spark of we would like to introduce a cause to this incentive trip all the way across the world actually inspired other um, charitable givebacks that we incorporate in a lot of events. In terms of uh, the peer chair concept, you know, we feel that people need that inner boost right all the time. And so by just seeing the chair cover, it will give people the motivation to do more. Uh, there's there's some nursing homes that people can't uh, see their families. And so next week we're gonna take them some chair covers and and just try to brighten their day. And I think that it's those small causes that you can participate in, whether they're personal, you know, connections to yourself, whether it's a 5K run for breast cancer or yeah. or other small things. But just, I think you always have to put it out there of your willingness to participate in a cause. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, what I liked most about his cause marketing is the fact that his cause marketing was in line with who they are, right? Yes. yes. They're a sandwich shop and they're going to be giving away free sandwiches, which is to me is what makes sense. And absolutely. You don't know this, uh, Sia, but Cynthia and I have started doing something together. You have? Did what is that? Her, Cynthia? I did not tell her, Michelle. Please do the honors. Yeah. So Glow we're starting small, just like Cynthia said, baby steps, right? You start with just one simple step. Um, but it's always been in our game plan to provide mentoring to individuals, right? Um, so Cynthia and I are the first ones to step into a mentor mentee program. And we're going to be working with one another and helping one another uh, grow, grow our businesses, right? So yes. oh, very wow. excited, very yeah. honored. I'm very honored to oh. uh, to have the invitation to work with Michelle. My mind is blown on that. Honestly, oh, Michelle, for for you two to be the two inaugural kickoff for this program, I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna tell you right now, you guys are gonna be nothing but success. Uh, Cynthia is an amazing, <laughs> successful entrepreneur. And uh, what she's done together with Tied Together Marketing with all her uh, corporate events she pulled off. I mean, she was a, uh, you know, uh, a small business owner, you know, uh, gosh, girl, I remember when you had like maybe three girls with you or three professionals who yes. have a female with you and it just blew up over the years. And obviously the pandemic has shifted that a little bit, but I mean, you've tried and true, uh, gosh, oh, I'm so excited. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. I am very excited. And, and one of the things I think when Michelle and I first discussed a mentor ship between the two of us is that especially in the Louisville, Kentucky area, we do not have support for entrepreneurs and what better way for us to show this new chapter, what a successful mentorship looks like, 
and right. to be a part of an organization where you have access to other entrepreneurs, to capital, to innovative ideas, and to be able to, you know, rely on a network of people that get it <laughs> for the lack of, you know, that really get it and, and, and can help you uh, leapfrog your businesses and your professional growth, I think is so important. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I am too. I am too. I have to say, uh, I really want to hear your perspective on this, Michelle, from Jeff uh, yesterday. When when he was talking about Witch Witch and, uh, and you know, starting that concept and how they had to simplify their menu this year and really kind of dive into what they're offering uh, look like and to really you know, work on that left bicep, which was delivery and, um, and takeout. And to me, I was like, oh, well, that was a no brainer for a sandwich shop. Of course, you're, you're always going to have takeout. You know, I mean, I have three children, we take out constantly, the kids eat in the car, his <laughs> PB and J is a real winner with my son Dalton. But do you see entrepreneurs that are just starting having to look at their business plan and simplify in times like this as well? Well, I think it's always a great exercise to go through. I mean, I had to do it with glow. There were so many things I wanted to do with glow. Mm -hmm. um, and we will, but I really had to drill it down and just get really simplified on our messaging, mm -hmm. who we are and what we really stand for. And what we really stand for is the capital component. Um, but I, you know, we have marketplace and we have the deal network and we have the discussion board and we have, so we have so much stuff. So we're, we're going through that exercise too, of just drilling down. And I, cause I think as an entrepreneur, we're always looking at the shiny objects and yeah. we always believe that we can do it too. Right. Um, and that everybody will get it cause we get it. Well, that's, that's right. Perfect, right. So that's right. It's the hustle. We have the hustle, the passion, <laughs> the drive, all those things Sia mentioned, but you know, I did find it interesting that here he is a serial entrepreneur with many concepts in the hospitality market. And he trans, you know, he basically did a pivot just like we were talking mm -hmm. about before. Uh, but before he spoke, I did a little research on Jeff. And, I, and one thing I thought was interesting when we talk about capital. So when he was starting Witch Witch, he could not get a lease for his restaurants because, you know, they weren't established. They were up against people like Subway and other sandwich shops. So he was like, how am I going to make this deal happen? Interesting enough, it was by adding the milkshakes. I'm sure you guys uh, have, have read that story. So he made the deal to get his first witch witch shop basically by adding milkshakes. So I think as entrepreneurs, capital sometimes doesn't come in the form of, you know, hard dollars, it comes into the opportunity, you know, in different forms by, you know, opening those doors. I completely agree with you. Yeah. I mean, you have to get creative, right? Absolutely. And Sia, have you had that same experience uh, with the podcast of, of having to, you know, use capital in different ways or relationships in different ways as a means of growing your business. You know, the, you know, it, it's so funny with the podcasting, I feel so selfish, but yet at the same time, I'm, I, I do feel very selfish. And so they made me realize I need a bit more of a cause in my own business and what we do. Um, because our mission has always been to give a voice. Everyone has a story to tell. So share it. Right. We're not automatons in this world, especially from a business perspective, which is what we tend to focus on is business oriented um, or specific industry um, type podcasts. And I'm hearing these stories and I'm loving, I'm taking a lot into uh, it personally because I'm just like, I'm a bystander, a fly on the wall, if you will. But I realized though in my selfishness of like hearing everyone else's story that, you know, maybe we could do a better job of helping them you know, get their story out. So I've actually reached out to what I affectionately call the hobbyist type uh, podcasters or even business folks to encourage them to do their own hobby style podcast. 
because it's a great outlet for your own personality to really shine. That's outside of your business. It's outside of who you are. So it's really me trying to humanize the the world because I don't think we have enough humanity um, in this day and age right now. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit more subtle, but well, trust people out of their causes. If you want some causes to put on uh, for a podcast, I'm sure that uh, between Michelle and I, we can definitely recommend quite a few uh, yes. to get well, that started because they do need a platform. You're you're correct, and and you're the perfect host to allow them to share share their needs with people, and and you know yes. others gravitate towards that. We actually yeah. have a Glow, we have a Glow member that that's all they do is travel for cause events. And obviously their whole industry has been, the industry has been shut down and her business has been closed since March. So it's mm. really affected her. Um, but she would be someone that you should reach out to. See, I'll give you her name afterwards. Yeah, no, I'd love it. Yeah, we used to, uh, you know, it's funny and I just thought about it. It's been so long. Oh my God, what a long year it's been. Aaron and I used to, on our podcast, Innovation Calling, um, we used to have a monthly women in tech leadership series. And that was our cause. It was all about yeah. raising the profile of women in leadership. Yeah. And, and it was awesome. And uh, it was a way for people to gather, have a live audience recording. And uh, we just got nothing but positive feedback from it. Now with the pandemic, it just, as much as I love these types of interaction, it's just not the same when you're not in the room and you're hearing and feeling the energy of the audience giving you feedback as you're doing your podcast live. So, um, but yeah, no huge advocate for women in leadership. I think that's where we all are. You guys, there's three very successful business leaders right here talking. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And see, uh, you know, we have noticed uh, throughout the pandemic that even the most polished professionals struggle with, the energy of presenting, you know, just like we are now in front of their laptop. And that takes a completely different skill. And I'm sure that sales, you know, sales folks in any sector have the exact same, you know, uh, a challenge. You know, struggle, challenge, right, to do that. And so to, to, humanize that and make it comfortable, I think is a, you know, one of your absolutely, you know, biggest talents is to make people feel comfortable and give them that platform. So yes, back Thank at you. you. It's a big Thank love you. fest. It's the holidays, right? <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. It really is the holidays. I'm like feeling, love. I hope I'm blushing up right now. I forgot to put rouge on, but yeah, no, I, I will say this much. Uh, I, I'm so grateful. And again, with just conversation about, you know, having a cause, whether it be simple, what he started off with three PB, PB and J sandwiches, right? Find whatever it is in your business that, that makes sense for you, whether it's from your heart or it's part of your core mission value with your business. It just happened to make sense for him to give away PB and J. Obviously we're not saying everyone go out and give out, you know, sandwiches, right? If it's not a uh, part but of your business. But if you want plan. to, <laughs> that and frozen lemonade. I loved his story about his frozen lemonade. I did too, but his, and, his, and pushing through with what, learning and understanding what his true values were, right? With that story. I don't yeah. know if y'all saw this or not, but when I asked him the question, I said, Jeff, what would you tell the younger Jeff Sinelli now that you're, you know, have had the successes you've had? Did y'all see that he teared up? Oh, I, I, I saw him pause, but we, yeah. we could not see on camera that that it was an emotional moment. So tell us about that. Yeah, he got he got really teary eyed and he said, well, I would tell the young Jeff, whose name is Ian and happens to be in the room right now. Yes. Do you remember him saying that? Yes. And there was a young um, a young guy in the in the room with us that he's mentoring. And um, he's so that was his mentor. Okay. Yeah, and he's shadowing Jeff, and Jeff is really kind of taking him under his arm and showing him things about business. And he got really, you know, very sentimental about it. It was really sweet. Um, so that's back to your authenticity with him, Sia. Mm -hmm. I, I just love the authenticity with him. He's just so real. He's in the moment, and he's so present. He you know. really is. He really yeah. is. And, and, you know, he also, going back to the authenticity component of it, I thought it was quite interesting when he was telling his first entrepreneur story 
of the lemonade stand and how mm -hmm. it was cold. And, you know, the gentleman said, put the tip jar out. He made a hundred dollars, repaid his mom. So that said two things specifically to me. Number one, that he was personally accountable for, mm -hmm. for the money that he had borrowed from his borrowed. mom to start. And that that was a pride, right? He had pride to return the capital investment from his mom, even though that was family. A lot of children these days, you know, I have three of them. They do not. So they think <laughs> if you give them money, it's theirs. Mm -hmm. So I think that that component shows what kind of gentleman he is. But also the fact that he, he needed to keep reserves for just in case moments. And that says a lot about him that he's thinking about, I need to stand on my own two feet always mm -hmm. and, and, and make sure that I can be prepared for what comes next. And I think as, you know, business owners, that is a very important lesson in, in being true to yourself and not always relying on others to, mm -hmm. to help, you know, through finances or, or whatever the case may be. But as a young entrepreneur starting out, how do you get to that point? Because you're spending every dollar that comes in to run the business when you're first. How do you as an entrepreneur go, OK, I need to be setting aside this amount of money with each dollar that comes in. So for that rainy day, if that rainy day does ever come. And I think that was a big lesson learned for him when he had Genghis Khan, because he hadn't set aside the money for That's that. Right. Rainy day, That's right. right. He didn't have it. So it was a big lesson learned that he'd never be in that position again. That's right. That's right. And, and to me, I think that that is definitely something that no matter how excited you get about a product or your service or your company, that you have to have a reserve no matter yeah. what. It's very and important. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't ask this question. I wish I would have, but when he, I would tend to think, you know, most entrepreneurs, when they're raising capital, they never really go to the full point of the money. They go, you know, if I only get this amount, that's okay. That's all I need. And I can make this work as opposed to saying, I need to really fully capitalize my business and fully capitalize. It means going to this level and beyond and having some reserves with the capital that I've raised. Right. So right. that if something does happen you've got it over there in the safe place again so i think that's another lesson i bet you anything i don't know for sure but i bet you anything with which which um that they had raised more than enough so that if a rainy day ever did come they had enough set aside now i don't know that for sure but that would be my guess it's such well, a it's such a wise thing i mean but, see you took a leap of faith you know leaving the the corporate sector to start your own company I mean, did you plan for those moments along the path? Yeah. Well, I mean, all my career, I'd saved money. So I'm going to give full credit to my partner in life. My boyfriend uh, is a saver. I am a consumer <laughs> of a lot of food and drink. I drink my life away. But, you know, hey, <laughs> that's, a that's a philosophical discussion. But I did learn to save as a result of uh, having a positive influence in my life. So I had a, had a huge nest egg, if you will, to play around. Uh, we lived modestly such that when I decided to take that leap of faith, I, I had a big cushion, if you will, mentally to, to take those risks, yeah. right? So this is not like something I saved the last two years, right? This is ever since we got together when I was 28 years old. So it's, it's been, you know, a few few years since uh, I've been saving, you know, increasingly as my, you know, career progressed. So yeah, I was lucky. I, I ha had that. I think so, what you said is a good, is a good comment about living modestly. When Jeff talked about how he lived in the back house <gasps> and it wasn't pretty. It, and, wasn't, pretty. Uh, it wasn't pretty. When he first started Genghis Khan. So he was, yeah. you know, out there hustling, not, not spending it, living yeah. modest and trying to make it work. Right. So my first office, I really related to that story. My first office, I had a small apartment in California and my first office space was literally seven by seven space. I had a tiny desk and I shared the space with a giant water heater. So <laughs> it was the desk, a chair that you really had to kind of climb over the desk to get in and the water heater. And 
you, I was very proud of my space, but I knew that that was the starting point for me. And that was the starting point of Tied Together. And over the years, I think that people, you know, things ebb and flow in their lives, you know, whether it's through divorce, you know, a, a venture that doesn't go well, layoffs, things like that. But I think staying true to what your desires are and what your goals are, there's ways to take those moments and make yourself stronger. I completely agree. See, what your first office look like when you guys first started out? Well, do you want, I can, I can flip my, uh, my webcam around if you want to see it. But let, that let's, just say, let's just say uh, it's it's an eclectic mix of my tastes and uh, a blue screen. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that goes back to what you said. That that goes back to what you said. You're using your resources smartly, right? In yeah. your in your studio, and you know, and not renting a space necessarily or, or buying a space right up front. I think that, you know, investing in your equipment, investing in your social and your marketing plan is, is uh, key. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's the other thing. Sometimes you don't necessarily have to invest in capital necessarily up front. So we entered into a partnership with city central here in Dallas, Fort Worth area. So we run all our podcast studios. So there's a reason why we have three locations is because we partnered with city central and they asked us, Hey, if you're going to be podcasting, do you want to manage the studios for us? And we said, why not? And so that's the other there's thing. Your there's your capital. There's your capital and different partnerships. Yeah. In partnerships, absolutely. I believe in ecosystem. I do believe in a strong community of you know raising each other up. I say it all the time: mm -hmm. is all ships rise with the tide. That's why I glow so appeal to Aaron and me because we're like, you know what? We're part of a crew that is actually wanting to be successful together. So, okay. I want to give a shout out to some some of the Dallas crew guys that like are been so faithful, so rock solid to to see the success of this chapter. Jonathan Anderson, he launched his podcast. Uh, because because of us and and glow and Michelle because he's loving all the live of weekly events him and Jonas Bull both members were like you know what let's do this so you guys want to check out Jonathan Anderson and his podcast uh it's called uh the ABC podcast which is very funny because it's a com it's a combination of like comics business talks and video games it's very <laughs> very cool eclectic mix um <laughs> And Leslie Flores has started to branch out. Now she's the founder of Moments by Design, Party in a Box. Which is Rocking a great culture, concept. Great which, concept. by the way, Cynthia, you guys need to partner up. It makes and absolute sense. We have sense. definitely been in, in talks, and we have one later on today, that our company, Synergy, is, is phenomenal. So Leslie has done an amazing job of providing all those people with the last-minute uh, you know, party in a box so they don't have to run all over town. It's just an amazing concept. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Rashmi, I mean, I'm doing a shout out here if you guys noticed. Rashmi Malhotra. So she has two things going on. She has a successful technology consulting business. And then on the side, she decided, hey, I'm going to kick off some uh, Jean Charles Boisset loving because the woman loves her wine. So a lot mm -hmm. of. So anyone that loves wine, hit us up. We've got a lot of uh, great connections. If you guys love Raymond Wine. And like her guys. discounts on for being a GLOW member. That was uh, yeah. amazing. It's great job. Welcome. Absolutely. Coup on Michelle. Uh, again, partnerships and relationships. Mm -hmm. um, Egbert Lim, wellness, right? So uh, love his business. It's actually, uh, he has a business that's uh, launching for uh, oxygen, right? So you see those oxygen right. bars and whatnot. Um, he has something sim similar, but for the home usage uh, and businesses, um, like, you know, spas and whatnot. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, Emery Geosits, actually. Uh, he is a Dallas School member, but he actually just relocated recently. But he is now a managing director at, um, oh, goodness gracious, uh, uh, Global IT. Uh, which is basically an outsource where they augment businesses that want to conduct business internationally. So they've got resources. Cool. So uh, if you need services, you know, when I worked at HP, there were times when I couldn't get into Zimbabwe, for example. That's what they do. They provide services for uh, U.S.-based yeah. companies that want to do business internationally. So he's a managing director now on that, which is exciting. Wow, great um, job. Uh, yeah, Sheila Steinmark, uh, she is a experiential marketing uh, a, a, a business. So uh, sent her off to a client of ours. So she's helping them out. 
Um, gosh, oh gosh, I'm getting that, and I feel like the pressure that I feel lost if I leave anyone, I'm gonna feel bad. Anyway, lots of people that I'm leaving out now. I just want to say thank you all, everyone that has joined us. Michelle, if I can, with parting words and thoughts, what are your thoughts that you're grateful for 2020 uh, as the CEO and founder of Glow? And also, what are your thoughts for 2021? What's your future plans? You know what? So as everyone in 2020, we had to look at our business model and our, you know, the direction we were going. We had to we had to change. I mean, you said it earlier, the pivot was the word, uh, oh. Cynthia, and we had to pivot. Um, we were going around and opening chapters, doing events, live events, and we couldn't continue to do that, obviously, with COVID. So we went online and started doing these events online. But what it did for us, which I think is a real blessing, it provided a new means for GLOW. And in 2021, GLOW is launching the GLOW Network, which I'm really, really excited about. We've got fantastic programming that's coming on board um, with, you know, big names, like really big names as our host on different programs. And Sia and Aaron, we're going to be working with you on that. So it's so exciting. Very, very excited. And I feel very blessed that that uh, Glow has provided the platform for me to get to meet so many wonderful entrepreneurs like Cynthia uh, and, and to reconnect to Jay out of Pittsburgh. Uh, he and I were buddies from the past and we've reconnected and um, I, I love the opportunity and, and Jeff said this yesterday, um, being surrounded by like-minded peers. So you can be around, you know, in a network with people that are maybe in your same industry, but they might not be the same type of person like you, because I think as an entrepreneur, we're very unique personalities. So <laughs> I'm going to Special. Mom calls it special. It's very special. Yes. A mind of our own is uh, yeah. what my parents say. As they say, yeah. you, you guys have a mind of your own. So, yes. So, I feel very blessed for that, that Glow's given me the platform to meet, reintroduce, reconnect, and then the platform to provide content, which I obviously I love to do, um, and bring in and expose new content to other people. That's great. That's great. Michelle, I'm so grateful for you. Cynthia, I'm obviously always, you know, so grateful for you. Oh, and I'm so good. glad to, I'm so glad that we're reconnecting at a business level again, yes, as well as obviously our personal relationship. So guys, we went a little bit longer than normal, but I think it's worth it. Uh, I do want to say, Michelle, absolute gratitude to you. Thank you for yes, much, much gratitude, much yeah. gratitude to, the, to the two of yeah. you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank awesome. you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Much gratitude. Much gratitude for me to you. So 2021 has no idea what's coming their way with the three of us. I just want to say <laughs> that we're it coming to be a phenomenal year. And I think just it just is going to be a phenomenal year. And I cannot wait. So well, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very, very much. Wonderful. So on that note, everyone, this is the last Afterglow Live Recap podcast of 2020. We will be back next month after the, oh, with, oh my gosh, Michelle, when is our first date? January. Our, first, our first event is January. The we, we come in the second week of January because I just felt like everyone was going to be kind of getting back into a groove. So we start with Bruce Eckhart, um, who, I mean, uh, Bruce Eckfeld who is a leadership guru. So I'm excited to kick off the year with him. So That's leadership great. 2021. Excellent. Perfect. And for everyone asking what the heck is glow, everyone check out W I T H G L O.com with glow.com and peruse it. If there's any questions, hit me up and uh, happy to answer your questions. So on that note, everyone let's wrap it up for another uh, final episode of 2020 after glow live recap podcast. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Happy New Year.